So we've done it. We've got out of London. We've escaped the city. I think this is my first proper walk out of London this year. I'm pretty sure. I can't think of any others apart from, no. I, I did a little just impromptu walk out to where in Hertfordshire for my front door, but in terms of getting on a train and escaping the city, this is definitely the first time. Hope you're all well and you're ready for today's adventure. And an adventure it will be. We're out in North Essex, right on the border with Suffolk. More about that in a moment. And we're going to walk along the Stour estuary for a bit, or in the territory of the Stour, and we'll be following the Essex Way, probably to Harwich if I get there in time. It's about half twelve midday, a bit late to be starting really, but there you go. I actually changed my plans this morning to accommodate the, the forecast heavy storms that are going to sweep across most of southeast England, but apparently not up here along this estuary. So it would have ruined my, <laughs> my planned walk into Bedfordshire to Sharp and Ho Clappers. So I looked at the maps. I already had this walk in mind. In fact, I've had this walk in mind for quite a few years now, but I've said too much to start with. We've got to walk along the road here into Manning Tree, and then we'll continue this conversation there. Even though we're walking through this sort of industrial estate on the edge of Manning Tree, on the edge of town, at the edge of the estuary, you still get that sense that you're heading out to see Harridge out there at the end, the Grand Harridge Docks. Manning Tree claims to be the smallest town in England. Uh, which is actually somewhere in Kent, it clearly isn't. I think it's got about double the population of the smallest town in Kent, but it is actually the home of Matthew Hopkins, the witch finder general, the 17th century terrorizer of witches. Hopkins claims to have heard local women discussing their meetings with the devil here in Manantry, and that led him to become obsessed with hunting down witches, finding witches, and ultimately putting them on trial, and they were executed, many of them. He wrote the very influential book, The Discovery of Witches, published in 1647, and within a year of its publication, you had witch trials happening as far away as the colonies in New England, where his book was cited as evidence in the witch trials. Here we have the River Stour. Apparently there's a number of ways this is pronounced in different places here. I think it could be either Stour, as I'm pronouncing it, or a bit more like Stour. Stour or Hour. Stour or Stour. But um, it's not clear where the name derives from. It occurs in different forms in Europe. Some people have claimed it's a Celtic word meaning strong. So we are now on the Essex Way here, walking along the walls, just at the end of Key Street in Manningtree, heading for Mistley and Mistley Towers. The Essex Way is a, is a long distance path. I'll put the exact mileage on the screen here. Something like 85, 88, 89 miles. I've walked actually the, the first section of the Essex Way from Epping to Ongar, and now I'm gonna walk the last section of the Essex Way, or at least uh, a good part of it anyway. I'm not sure, entirely sure where we'll end up today, but it'll either be Harwich uh, International or, or Harwich Town. The Essex Way takes a little bit of a loop when it gets to Harwich and goes down to the coast and back up the coast. So I don't know if we'll have enough daylight to do that. Or in fact, we've got to get the train back to London, so. I spent probably a little bit too long in Manning Tree, but it's a really delightful little place. And I thought I would load up with some food. So I've got a, a lovely beef pasty here. I don't want to repeat of what happened when I walked along the River Crouch. Those of you who watched that video will remember running out of food and water and everything. So hopefully not today. Loaded up, beef pasty. So apparently there have been large numbers of mute swans living in this area here at Mistley, along the walls, along the Stour. 
They've been here since the, uh, the 17th century. All right, this is one of the largest swan herds in the country. Isn't that fascinating? There's a few geese down there, there's interlopers. So this is Mistley Towers. I think they're the remains of an abandoned church that was designed by the great Robert Adam. Robert Adam's famous for some notable architecture in London, but also the market house in High Wycombe known as the Pepper Pot. One of the great architects of the 18th century. So we need to look out for the Essex Way on the other side of the road here. So I think this is where it branches away from the Stour to head inland for, for a distance, for a short distance. This is an attractive place. This looks like some fairly old cottages here along the high street. This is a fairly significant factory here. It looks as though it's actually still in use, still working. Lots of pallets here. I wonder what they produce or produced in the past. And this is where the Essex Way takes us away from the estuary for a little bit. Actually down the side of the factory. Just through the factory grounds we have this little brook here running beside the path. Up these steps here and beneath the railway line. I do love a good underpass. I mean, technically this is like a railway tunnel or a tunnel under a railway, but I'm gonna count it as an underpass. It can go on the list. And we break out into the fields of Essex. I first thought of coming to Manning Tree to do this walk along the estuary uh, after the first time I caught the train up to Southwold a few years ago now, I think it was 2013, in the summer just before my book was published, there you go. And it just looked so beguiling from the train, I could see the boats bobbing around in the estuary and I thought there'll be a good walk there. I saw it on the map and it was on my list since then really. And then I thought, well, do you know what? Maybe I'll do the whole of the Essex Way. Maybe I'll do that in one go. So I kept parking this walk and never did it until today when the temperatures and the forecast thunder and storms that were sweeping across the southeast of England seemed to make a trip to Sharp and Hoe Clappers look a little bit of a folly or out to the Chilterns. So I thought, this is the day, this is the day I finally come out to Manning Tree. Obviously, if the thunderstorms hit us here, <laughs> you know, but even so, it's been really delightful so far, right? Some decent signage here. I probably would have carried on across this field, but the sign's pointing me this way, up into that wood for a bit of much needed cool shade away from the uh, temperatures, which are in the mid twenties. This is Furs Hill. Where I originate from in Buckinghamshire, furs is like a, a word for gorse. Um, clearly not the case here in Essex because this is all sort of oak, other trees <laughs> and brambles. I can't see this is a, a sort of place for gorse because gorse is usually on sort of heathland, isn't it? Open heathland. This is, uh, I think this is Mistley Heath here. Isn't it lovely? For many years, I didn't wear shorts when I was out walking in the countryside for this very reason, walking down an alleyway like this. My shins have just been stung to bits by stinging nettles. The building of the new houses on the edge of the fields here. I wonder if this field of wildflowers here is soon to be built over as well.
So we are here just by Missley Heath and the remains of St Mary's Church, although that would be a detour, so I'm going to stay on the path. And more worrying is I can hear distant rumbling, so I hope the storm isn't coming this way. Wow, what a beautiful sight. That's looking towards the estuary over there. And this is the field. The path apparently cuts straight across. I hope it's clearly marked with this field of crops here. This looks like corn, wheat, barley, hedging my bets. Six way signs on this little bridge here and on the post just to make sure and we continue across this field. Isn't that a sight for sore eyes? I associate this type of landscape and this part of the world with burial mounds and earthworks, archaeological discoveries. There's two principal reasons there. We're not a million miles away from Sutton Hoo. I say not a million miles away, it's a different estuary, but we're in that part of the world, East Anglia. East Anglia is incredibly rich with archaeology. These estuaries here, like the Stour Estuary, would have been exactly the kind of rivers that various settlers and invaders would have sailed along, like whoever is buried at Sutton Hoo. They would have taken their ships up the, the Deben Estuary and the Stour would have been another such estuary that would have seen ships from the continent sailing along its waters. And of course, the other more obvious reason is because of the brilliant BBC TV show, The Detectorists with Mackenzie Walk and Toby Jones, which of course is set in North Essex as well. And now we go along this deep furrow, dusty track. You can only imagine how muddy this would be in winter. This is the village of Bradfield. And we're just going to go a short distance along the street here and before heading back towards the estuary. This is St. Lawrence Church, Bradfield. Probably dates from the 13th century is what it says on the Historic England website. Just realising I should have taken the detour to St. Mary's Church at Missley Heath because that's where uh, Matthew Hopkins, the Witchfinder General, was buried a few hours after his death. <laughs> a few hours after his death, they weren't taking any chances, were they? They got him in the ground as soon as he turned cold. Here's the footpath with the Essex Way sign. And we're going to head across the fields back towards the estuary. When you head out on a walk, you're thinking ahead, aren't you? You're planning, you're, you're making sure you've got food and water, you're checking train times, looking at your map, thinking about the route, thinking about how much time you've got and whether you've got time to do the whole walk that you've got in mind, all that kind of thing. It's all very natural and that stays with you through the first little stages of the walk where it often takes a little bit of time to get going, doesn't it? But then you reach a point, and I think I've reached it now, which just doesn't matter anymore. I'm about three hours in now, and I'm just happy to go with the flow. And I'll end up, well, I'll end up, I'll eat when I'll eat. It's just so delightful and amazing to be out here. The logic of the walk itself has taken over. I'm walking through a field of onions here and the smell is really strong, very really strong smell of onions. It's fantastic. I thought we were going to get to walk along the estuary here but that's the railway line up there between us and the estuary so that's a shame. So we have to walk along the edge of the onion field. But we do get to go out to the estuary, look, through this, under this bridge here, straight ahead out towards the water. That's heaven.
This is what I came out here for today. Vistas like this. So the, the path doesn't actually lead right up to the water's edge. I guess this is, must be marshland here. I can even see some boats stranding in that field and there's these delightful purple flowers there. My path actually leads parallel to the water along the edge of the field here. And now we do go down to the water's edge, to the riverbank or where the water's edge would be. Slightly ominous, right? Although we are further north from Colchester than the setting for the Essex Serpent, but it's certainly this type of landscape there, it's set along the, uh, I think that's along the Blackwater Estuary, is it? Or the Colne Estuary. And soon to be turned into a TV series, I saw. I think on, uh, on Apple Plus, something like that, Apple TV. So that's exciting, isn't it? I'm looking forward to that. I always thought it would make a great film. So looks like they're going to string a mini series out of it. This is fairly squidgy and wet underfoot. And you're walking over this river weed, which is washed up so this must be where the high tide comes to it makes this kind of scrunching sound underfoot and now we're about to enter Rabness nature reserve this will be interesting i really needed to get out into the countryside today and this is certainly delivered on that front ah yes here we are on the sea wall. And I think I can feel the storm blowing in. I think you can see it there as well. So I'd be too surprised if I get caught in some rain shortly. Well, only a short section of the sea wall and then we go along this green path, a little strip of woodland, I think coming out into the village of Rabness. had a little moment of indecision back there but I could have left the Essex Way and gone on a slightly longer loop along the shore but I think I'll stick to the path even if it means a little bit of road walking. So this must be All Saints Church which dates from around the year 1100. 1100. Wow what a beautiful old monument. And this is interesting behind these old timbers here that you can just see the bell, the old bell, apparently the bell tower collapsed in the 17th century. And look, they've kept the bell in this wooden cage in the churchyard. Probably tell from my voice that I'm starting to feel a little bit tired. I need a rest. Although it's only about 24 degrees now, I mean 24 is hot enough, but in London it's, it was 28, 29. But it's just become quite humid and quite energy sapping. I think I've been walking about seven miles perhaps, nearly eight to Rabness. So I'm gonna have to find someone to have a sit down soon. There's a, a Grace and Perry designed house somewhere in Rabness that I really want to see. I hope it's on the Essex Way. Well, from the looks of the map, this is the path down to the sea. Seems pretty intent on marking it as a private road. So that was correct, the Essex Way continues along this path here behind these delightful little kind of shacks that are right on the estuary. Definitely feels like a storm is blowing in. There are, there are some, some fantastic looking little kind of like shacks right perched on the edge of the estuary there. You can see there's some people in them where they just opened up completely. It's a lot of sliding doors on either side. That must be heavenly. When I do journeys like this, when I do walks like this, in my mind they are real throwbacks to my backpacking days in my 20s when I went down through Southeast Asia, went to Sydney, Australia, met my wife and then we travelled back through India and then through France and Italy back to England. It was a very kind of carefree existence, particularly psychologically. I wasn't tethered anywhere, really. I see kind of echoes of that on YouTube, particularly, you know, there's a big 
a big van life movement now. I've noticed that a lot of people are living in their vans and living this kind of very transient life, moving from place to place. Some people are even living in their cars and doing it in order to just be kind of free and, and on the road. And for me, when I head out on a day like today, it's a little dose of that. I'm absconding from everyday life. I'm taking a, a step away from all your usual kind of responsibilities and cares and worries. And just coming out somewhere like this, <laughs> it's just magnificent. to find a good spot for a rest. Yell if you see somewhere. So this is Copperus Bay. So I'm just going to sit under this tree here looking out onto Copperus Bay. And my, um, my posh cheddar and pickle prep baguette is in surprisingly good nick. Well within the wrapper I mean I imagine it's pretty uh, it's been toasted in my bag, let's just say. Break time is over, time to move on. Well, that was a lovely break. Sat down there, looking out across the estuary. Now it's time to push on. There is um, a little bit of a decision point coming up where I think the Essex Way seems to split and one branch goes off to Harwich International. It's marked as an international path, whether that's the Essex Way or not. But, and then, which I think the main part of the Essex Way goes across the fields down to the other side, down to the coast, and then works its way back along the coast to the very end of the estuary where the, the confluence of the Stour and the sea, where it runs out to sea. That's slightly longer, so it'll be a question of how much energy I feel I've got and how much time I've got. Sunset's at nine o'clock tonight. Good time to enter Stour Wood just as it starts to rain lightly. You'll probably hear it on the leaf canopy up there. From looking at the map, it seems as if we're gonna bypass the main part of Ravness. I don't even know if we're gonna go back to the shoreline. I think we cut underneath the railway line in a second. Which is a shame, because this is where the Royal Navy had its mine depot for a number of years. It's where they would store all the mines before, I guess, putting them out to sea around the coast of Britain. I'm not sure. It's an interesting bit of tri <laughs> trivia about Ravness. Over the railway lines on this bridge, and we're now turning inland for a little bit again. The rain is slowed down to just a gentle, just a gentle few drops in the sky. You can see blue sky. Now a little bit of walking along a road with no footpath, which as you all know is one of my pet hates, but shouldn't be too far. Then we branch off to the right across those fields there. Problem with these little roads like this is they tend to get treated as racetracks by the drivers. A few of the cars that have passed me so far have gone at really high speeds. So you have to be, you have to be careful. You can't always just walk into the traffic if you're going to be walking into the traffic around a bend. You've got to go to where you've got room to get off the road. Like this little grass verge here. Thankfully not too far along the road. And then we go down this farm track here. So this is where we are here. I'll put a little arrow there coming off the road. Going down past Home Farm to Seagurs Farm. Then we turn into the village of Ramsey. That's the point where there's a decision. You can see where one major path goes up there towards Harwich International. It says E2 European Long Distance Route. I don't know what that means. And then you see the Essex Way also continues down here and then goes around the peninsula. So that's where we'll make a decision in the, in the little village of Ramsey. Through the cornfield here towards that windmill I can see in the distance. How beguiling is that? Fantastic. You can just about make out the line of the path here across this wheat field when they've all bent over and drooped over but you can see the line of the path there leading up to the windmill. This is quite a dramatic experience walking through this wheat field like this. <laughs> it's fantastic isn't it? 
what a walk of revelations and surprises it's been today. It's been fantastic. The sky is looking rather ominous above the windmill there. So whether that, whether that rain, there's a few spots of rain with just the, uh, the taster for what's to come, I don't know. But you can see the birds have lined up on the telephone wire up there. This horsey just followed me <laughs> across the field. I think he must think I've got food for him or her. Unfortunately, I don't. Do you want me to stroke your nose? It's, it's quite intense when they push their, the old nose against you and give you a proper sniff. <laughs> so I, need to, I need to close this gate. Come on, move back. I've ever so slightly lost the path, but the map does show it running behind the windmill here, so this seems to be the right way. There's something almost impossibly romantic about windmills, isn't there? Which is sort of slightly ridiculous when you think about it, they're just functional things for like grinding corn, but I don't know, now they have a real magic to them, don't they? Now I just have to go through the village of Ramsey, up to the crossroads and then make a decision. So that way there leads up to a long distance path which leads to Harwich International. Uh, if I was honest, I would really quite like to see the International Port. But if I go this way, I think I can connect with the Essex Way going down to the actual sea coast rather than the end of the estuary. I think I'm going to go this way to reconnect with the uh, Essex Way and get out to the sea. Love to see the sea today. So uh, an electoral map here of the wards. You can see, look, we're in Ramsey here. That's the path that goes out to Harwich International, but I'm going to go down this way and then up the coast, I think. It's about 20 past six, so I think I've got plenty of time to get to Harwich. Well, certainly for the last, <laughs> certainly for the last train, which is 20 past 10, but I reckon I can get there for sunset at nine o'clock, which would be lovely, wouldn't it? Sunset. From Harwich Town. So the Essex Way continues just on the other side of this quite busy road here. Overall the Essex Way is very well waymarked. There you go, it's one here which is very useful, otherwise I might have gone the wrong way. I mean I might still yet go the wrong way, but you know. It's interesting my sense of direction is so poor I wouldn't have found this footpath without the help of my phone with the OS map to tell me which direction to go in. Using my phone as a compass. God, this is a very dark path, isn't it? Not dark for very long. Brings me out into the fields. Going into the evening now. And I would have gone the wrong way again if it weren't for that signpost pointing me in that direction. I was kind of inclined to go that way. Bit of luck. Tendering needs you to bag it and bin it. Through little Oakley, and then across the fields towards the sea. Very exciting moment. There's a good example of why you need to trust the signpost. The signpost was pointing down here, heading not in the right direction, heading well directly towards Harwich Port. I thought the path goes to the right, but I thought I'll trust it and I'll find the right hand turn. And here it is here. You can see, you won't be able to see actually, signpost is buried in those trees. Can you see the rainbow there? Looks like it's coming out of the top of that oak tree right over the sea. This is a really exciting moment for me. As I come across this wheat field, I can just see the openness on the far side of this field, which I expect to be the expanse of the North Sea. It's a big moment for a city boy when you spend all your time cooped up in the city. To break out into open spaces like this is just majestic. So we walk along the edge of this creek here, 
the seas out there on the other side of this marshland and hopefully we connect with the sea wall there I think it's 25 past 7 and it's the perfect time to be in a landscape like this it's always the best time of a walk as you come into early evening and walk into the setting sun that sense I talked about earlier of being away of absconding and going far away being on the road backpacking this is when I get that feeling when I'm somewhere like this this kind of expanse you can imagine the expanses of Australia particularly when I lived on the northern beaches at Collaroy the view from our house was just of ocean incredible and I remember I expressed a similar sentiment when I was walking along the River Crouch a couple of years ago something about these landscapes which brings it to mind I don't know if you can see properly from here but just down there there's the sea and there's a beach down there you can hear a dog playing and barking on the beach there and there's some people down there it's a little bit of a shame that the Essex Way doesn't take you along the beach if I'm looking at the map I'm not even entirely sure how you get there technically speaking the Essex Way goes that way towards Harwich but I can't come this close to the sea and not get down there so I'm going to go down here and hopefully I can still carry along the shore to Harwich this is a lovely thing to find near the end of a walk I say, I was going to say nearly as good as finding a pub. I think it's actually probably better than finding a pub. But, but because I've got at least another mile or so to walk, I can't dip my toes in there yet, but I will at the end. I really want to get my feet wet at the end. I mean, I can't promise that because I don't know if there'll be access to the water at the end, but still. Just the last leg of the walk now. Along the sea wall here. And then uh, around into Harwich Town. Ah, the sea, the sea, the sea. What a majestic feeling to stand beside the sea, the North Sea. Harwich is one of what they call the haven ports. It's a, the last kind of deep harbour between the Thames and the Humber. Important port since the Middle Ages. Just reading on Wikipedia, it's one of the um, ports that claims to be the departure point for the Mayflower. I'd always assumed that was on the south coast somewhere, like um, Plymouth, surely. But maybe it was built here and they sold it down to Plymouth, I don't know. But I think the captain of the Mayflower was from Harwich. As I'm sure you can imagine, played a big role in many important events in history in the Napoleonic Wars. I think it's more known for the landings that didn't take place here than the ones that did. I think William of Orange tried to land here but got blown into the channel. And today it's an important ferry terminal takes you over to the Hook of Holland. I think you can also go to Belgium from here. So my dad used to get the train to and from Germany when he was in the army. I, was, I grew up hearing about the journey to Harwich and then to the Hook of Holland. And I think they used to the Great Eastern train out of Liverpool Street used to connect here at Harwich and then you get off on the other side and get straight on a train all the way into Germany. I think these are the lighthouses here. Originally built in the 17th century then completely rebuilt in the 19th century. The Dover Court lighthouses. So the final part of the Essex Way just takes me along the seafront here, then around that headland there, and then on to the station. Train leaves in just over an hour, an hour and a quarter, so I think I've got time to do it. Well, this has got to be one of the most dramatic ends to any walk I've done. Isn't it beautiful here, overlooking the North Sea, ferry on its way to the Hook of Holland. You can just see the moon behind me there. This is amazing. At the end of the Essex Way. So the path takes us around that point there. I think that's called Dover Court Point. 
and there should be a, a fort there. There might even be what we can see there, Beacon Hill Fort. And then we'll have to turn for the station. This is some of the fortifications here. This is the seaward facing part of the fort. These must be Second World War. A great place to be at sunset at the end of a walk. This is astonishing, isn't it? Look at this. Wow. something genuinely awe-inspiring about the massive container ships over there, isn't it? I think that distant rumbling I could hear all day was the containers being loaded and unloaded by the ginormous cranes. So this is where I have to leave the seafront. A bit sad to do it to be honest with you, but my train leaves in about half an hour so I need to find the station. What is good is that I'll be walking towards that lighthouse there and walking into the sunset. Wow, and here's a little sign for the Essex Way. So maybe this is the end of the Essex Way. I was thinking I hadn't seen these signs. Isn't it magnificent? On the side of the lighthouse here. There you go, 81 footpath miles from Epping. Here ends the Essex Way on the side of the lighthouse. Fantastic, fantastic. It's a shame I hadn't done the 81 miles, but I think I've done about 25 of them now. So this is officially the end of the walk, according to the sign there. The Essex Way, and what a majestic section of the Essex Way this was. From Manning Tree here to Harwich. And of course I've done the bit from Epping to Chipping Ongar. So I've done the first section and now I've done the last section. I suppose this means that I have to do the bits in between at some point. <laughs> so I've just got to make my way to the station now through the town. It, I think it's about five minutes away. So it's probably a good time for me to sign off beneath the lighthouse here. Thank you so much for joining me on that walk along the magnificent Essex Way. What a glorious walk it was. I really needed it. The first walk this year outside London, which is a special event, a really big occasion. Let's hope there's many more. Um, well, as I always like to say, I look forward to seeing the next walk, wherever that may be. Maybe you could drop some suggestions down below. Interested to hear your thoughts.